Well, hello and welcome back to another episode. It's great to see you all. I hope you're doing well. So if you're anything like me, you regularly find yourself dealing with large data sets, large arrays, large matrices, doing processing on all of that data in order to produce some kind of result. And almost invariably, when you do that kind of analysis, there comes a time when you need to write a report about it. And that report is going to require data in the form of tables. And this can be a real pain. If you have very large amounts of data, it can be a real pain to put all of that into a table and format it and make it look nice. Now, we know that LaTeX, the document preparation system, is very good for doing this kind of thing. It can create really beautiful looking tables, but it can be really cumbersome to take all of your data out of whatever analysis platform you're using and putting it into a LaTeX table. Although it's not that difficult to create tables in LaTeX, when you've got lots of numbers going on, it does get quite difficult. And this is a problem that I faced many times. And some time ago, I set out to make a simple tool to make my life easier in this regard. And so I created a Python function that allows me to take a NumPy array and convert that automatically into the LaTeX code for a nice looking table. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. That's the subject of this video. Uh, hopefully that will be of interest and hopefully be of use to at least some of you out there. So before we jump into it, that just leaves me to say that if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any future videos. And if you like this video, please do remember to hit the like button. Thank you very much. So without much further ado, let's jump into Python and let's look how we can create a function to automatically convert numpy arrays into LaTeX tables. Okay, so here we are in the uh, Python code that I've written. As I said just in the introduction, really what I've done is we create a very simple function that takes as input a NumPy array and a list of column headings and a list of format strings. And then, and then from that, it will go on to generate the LaTeX code required uh, to make the corresponding table. Uh, like I said, it's, it's, it is actually quite simple. Um, it's fully functional really for what I wanted it to do, but it's not some kind of function that's going to deal with every use case in every possible situation. What I tend to do is adapt this function uh, in terms of the code for the specific table that I want to create. Now I find that that works fine for me and you know since this is a means to an end rather than um, the thing in and of itself I didn't really want to invest too much time in creating one generic function that's going to be able to handle every possible situation. Uh, so there we go. With that caveat in mind, let's uh, go ahead and look at the code. So the co the function is simply defined here. We're using obviously NumPy, so we import NumPy as NP, and then we have def generate LaTeX table for our function uh, declaration and accept as input input array, uh, which is our NumPy array that we want to represent as a table. Uh, column headings, a list of column headings, and format strings. Okay. It, I just want to show you what those are. So before we talk about the function itself, I'm going to drop down to the code at the bottom where we actually call the function so you can see how it works. So here we have the main execution code. And the way we use this, if we have some NumPy array, such as I've defined here, a simple test array, okay, like so, we then define what our column heading should be. Uh, in this case, we have two column headings. We have one called index, and now we have one that spans two columns. So we use the slash slash multi column LaTeX command. So we span two columns. This is the formatting. You'll recognize this from how LaTeX tables are formatted. So a pipe is a, a vertical line. C stands for center to center the content of that column, and then the pipe for a vertical line at the end. And then we have the column heading uh, two. So we have, uh, we can see from our array here, actually, we have three columns in our array array, but we define only two column headings because we specified this one to span two. So altogether that covers three columns. Now the function is flexible enough to be able to deal with that. And then we define our format strings. So these define the numerical format that we want to have for our numbers. One of the very powerful things about using this kind of methodology to create LaTeX tables automatically is that you can really quite easily specify a different numerical format uh, for each column, which can be very useful. So in this case, I've specified uh, the first column to be 04D, so that's going to be integer numbers with consisting of four uh, four digits and zero padded, and then 2.4F and 2.2F, so that's floating point uh, with four decimal places and a floating point with two decimal places. And then to actually create the table, we simply call generate LaTeX table, we pass to it those three variables, 
and that will give us our output. Now, the way this function works is it creates the output in the terminal window, and then you simply copy and paste it into your LaTeX document, uh, your .tech file, wherever you want it to be. As I say, for me, this is the approach I use, and I, for me, I find this works really very well. Of course, you could extend this to write the code out directly into a file that would also be possible. Okay, so that's how the code works. And let's just have a look at the actual function itself. There isn't that much to it. Uh, the first thing we do is we determine the number of rows and columns. So num rows, comma, num calls is equal to input array dot shape. That's pretty straightforward. We then determine the number of headings. And I've written here in the comments that we note that that can be different to the number of columns if slash multi column is used. OK, so num headings is simply equal to the length of the column headings list. And then we generate the start of the table and the column alignment specifier. So what we're going to do is actually go through and we're going to create a single string called table string that is going to contain all of the LaTeX code required to generate our table. So the first thing we put into table string is going to be clearly the very first piece of code, which will be slash slash begin tabular um, open curly bracket pipe. OK, and then after that, we have the... Um, column uh, specifiers that specify exactly how we want our columns to be aligned. So left, center, or right, L, C, or R uh, for each column, and then vertical lines where we want them or not. Okay? So, yep, so we create our initial content for table string. Note that it's necessary to use slash slash, okay? So in the, the actual LaTeX command here is simply single slash begin, okay? But we put two slashes, otherwise, um, the string gets in that the slash b will get interpreted as um, a command to use in, in the string and it doesn't therefore evaluate properly. So we put two slashes and then when we print that out to the terminal, it actually renders as just a single slash. And we're going to loop through every column for i in range 0 to num calls and then for every column we do table string plus equals c pipe. So what that's simply going to do, I'm assuming in my table that all of the columns are going to be centered so there's no way to change that without changing this code specifically. So for every column, that will simply go through and add C and a pipe, and then it'll do that for all of the columns. And then we want to finish that line of the LaTeX code. So we have table string plus equals, and then this is the end of the line. So we close the curly brace, so that's matching that one. Then we have slash n for a new line. We do slash h line, which is the LaTeX command to put in a horizontal line, and then slash n for a new line again, okay? I think what we're going to do, what would make sense at this point, let's just run the code because we've covered quite a lot there. And if I go to my terminal window and I run the uh, code that we're looking at, okay, this is the output it produces. So I think at this point it'd be quite useful actually to have a look. So this is the first line that we've generated, okay, if this is for our three column array. So we have slash begin tabula and then we have these column centered declarations there automatically defined and slash h line okay so that's that's the bit that we've got so far and we can see it here again for a bigger table you see we've got slash begin tabula and then all our columns are uh, declared as being centered and slash h line okay all right let's continue with the code the next thing we do is we generate the table headings, um, noting of course that we have to deal with the last heading differently we'll come to that in a moment so we have for i in range 0 to num headings and the current heading is equal to column headings index at i, so we just get the ith heading from the list. And then we do table string plus equals current heading. That's really very simple. So we just add, um, add the current heading into our string, just like that. Okay. And then if i is less than num headings minus 1, then we put an ampersand between them. Else we're on the last one, in which case we need to do slash slash to tell LaTeX to go to the next line and then slash n to put in the next line. So let's have a look what that looks like. So what that gives us is, in the case of the first table here, it gives us index, ampersand, and then the slash multi-column command that we saw. And, and then for the last one, it puts slash slash. Okay, so we can see it more clearly, perhaps, for this bigger example, where we have our first column, second column, ampersand, second column, ampersand, third column, ampersand, fourth column, and so on. And then the last one is finished with a double slash. And note, to get the double slash, here we have to use four slashes, so a pair of paired slashes, if that makes sense. And we then add a horizontal line below the column headings, table string plus equals slash h line. Okay, so this is this slash h line command. 
And now we're actually going to go through and generate the table body itself. And as before, for the headings, we have to deal with the last column separately. So first of all, we loop through every row. So for row in range 0 to num rows. And then we loop through every column for column in range 0 to num calls. OK, and then we have the current string is uh, we're using this F syntax here because we're using a string literal. And we have uh, input array row comma column, which is in curly bra. All of this is in these curly braces because that's a variable. So input array row column input array, remember, is the array that we're actually wanting to uh, extract our data from. So row column will pull out the relevant element of that and colon. And then we have the format string that we want to use. So this has to be specified as another variable. So it has to go inside the curly braces. And that's quite important. We're using the string literals. It took me a little while to figure that out. Uh, so we take format strings corresponding to that column. And that's it. That generates current string. And Depending on where we are, if we're less, if current column is less than num calls minus well, we add to current string simply an ampersand. Else, we know we're on the last column, so we add to current string slash 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 n, exactly as we did for the uh, column headings. And then finally, outside of that if else block, we do table string plus equals current string. So what this will do is generate a string for every row. OK, and we'll then add that on to the end. And we can see when we look at the output, that's exactly what we get. So each each row, you see, comes out as a separate line here. So we have our first element from our array, ampersand, second element, ampersand, third element, and then slash slash, and then so on down the other elements. OK. And then once you've done all of that, we just have to remember to end the tabular environment. So we do a final table string plus equals slash slash h line slash n, uh, so on, as you can see there. And the effect of that is simply to put in these last commands here like that. OK. And that's basically it, really. And then we just do print table string to print that output to the terminal window. And then, like I said, what we can do from there is simply copy and paste that into our LaTeX document. So let's have a look what that looks like. OK, so I've gone ahead and created a very simple tech file to really show um, how all these things work. So this has a very basic example table um, here. Uh, so for a LaTeX table, we have slash begin table. And then if you want it centered on the page, we have a slash begin center to create that environment. OK, and the tabular environment, that's the this bit here. If I highlight it, this is the bit that's automatically generated. And then it's up to whoever's creating the document um, to put in the, the necessary things there. And I like to do it that way. I just think that gives a greatest flexibility flexibility okay and then we have other examples here so if I if I go ahead uh, let's let's take out that one for the moment and just save that and go back to my terminal window table demo dot tech put the output into output dot text so we don't need to worry about that okay OK, so that's the very simple table that we generate. We see we have three columns and index and column two which spans both columns. Uh, there we go. Really straightforward table. So let's just have a look at how we would actually use um, the code that I've written to to create a table. So in this code, we one of the things that we I put in the uh, main execution block here, the entry point is to generate a bigger random table. So this creates a random table of 15 by 7, so 15 rows of 7 columns, and uh, generates the column headings and the format strings with a loop, as you can see there, and then simply calls generate LaTeX table with those three variables exactly as we saw. So if we go to our terminal, okay, go to our terminal, if we run that Python 3 table demo.py. So I'm using Linux, which means that I can just select everything and then middle click with my middle mouse button where I want it to go. In a different operating system, you might need to use copy and paste uh, manually. But if we go back to our LaTeX document, here it is. And we're going to create here slash begin table and then slash end table. Oh, table like so. And slash begin center slash end center. And into here, we're going to paste that block of text. So I've just clicked with my middle mouse button and that has dumped all of that into there as you can see. So if I save that and now we go back to our term LaTeX uh, table demo dot tech and I'll just put the output into a file because we don't really need to see it. Okay and 
Okay, so here we are, that's the table we had before, and now we see we have the much larger table uh, which has been automatically generated from the NumPy array containing this numerical data. And you can see that there's a lot of flexibility here with this approach. What I'm showing is really a very basic function that only does the very most basic thing. There's a lot of scope for extending this and making it more flexible, being able to deal with you know, different and more complicated situations and so on. As I said, my approach really is to simply adapt the code to fit the table that I want to create and then I move on. I didn't really want to invest too much time in creating the Python function itself. So that's really sort of where I've left it and, and this is enough to be useful to me. And uh, yeah, well, I really hope it might be useful to some of you as well. There we go. That's really everything I wanted to talk about today. We've had a look at a very simple Python function that we can use to convert NumPy arrays into the equivalent LaTeX code that we can then copy and paste into our LaTeX document to create nice looking tables of that data. It's not fully functional necessarily. There are some limitations in terms of what we can do with formatting for the, with the code, Python code as it is. But what I tend to do is adapt the code to suit the particular table that I want to create. I when I'm just working on stuff for myself, I find that easier than trying to create a function that's going to work in every case without being modified. Anyway, I really hope that's been of interest and of value to at least some of you out there. If you've liked this video, please do remember to hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel so you don't have to miss any future videos. Anyway, listen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for watching. And I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.